God, we are getting we are getting better and better, Enrico. Yeah, great. Now it was expectation that I want to go live with this long countdown. So people, I know we are queuing people in front of the computer to see us now. So <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's good. I'm just. Uh, it's funny to see. You know, uh, for all, thank you very much all for joining. Uh, we are on the sixth session and we're still learning. I can just yes. tell you that. Uh, uh, each day or each each uh, webinar which we are doing with Enrique, we learn something new, and we're learning the new buttons, especially just to press or not press in the, in the right sequence. So thank you very much for all joining us today. Uh, we had a good feedback from the last session, which is we have some couple of questions as well. Uh, so this is great. Um, talking about the, the questions, Enrique, what we have is... Uh, I have the one question, what is really the content of the, the readiness assessment? I think we can just cover it at the end if we will have a time. So I think yep. that will be mm -hmm. good. Um, there are a couple of the guys who are asking, uh, you know, which regions also we operate in, in which countries. Um, that was also very good questions because I didn't know really how to answer because we can just, uh, if uh, we can speak Polish, French, English, Spanish, uh, so just whatever you speak. And if not, we learn. If not, we learn. <laughs> uh, I try to learn German right now. That's not, <laughs> I can tell you this. You will need a couple of years to, to, <laughs> to make the business in German. Uh, but it's uh, so, I think the beam will be faster than my learning German. <laughs> learning German. <laughs> okay, so we are on the, uh, on our next six sessions. What we will be just talking today, Enrique? Uh, what, yeah. What's your plan just to challenge me again? So welcome everyone to the sixth episode. We are going to today make a recap about the things we are covering. By the end of the, of the season, the recap will be gone. So <laughs> slowly going to get bigger and bigger. Um, today we're going to get uh, a deeper knowledge about some technical aspects of BIM, which are the dimensions and the levels. So we're going to see what are the dimensions of BIM and what are the levels of detail of BIM. So, so what you're telling me that after the sixth session, I supposed to already remember the, the all of the basics. So what is the <laughs> maybe, thing? maybe not after the sixth, but soon, 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 because you see this rec this recap first one is is uh, is growing and growing. And I know we have many people joining and joining. I don't want them to miss because for me it's important that you keep more or less a track of the things we are we are explaining through the webinar. So um, that's why I want to repeat myself with this visualization and information. I know that everyone knows this uh, this core two words from the, for the build definition. Okay. But, uh, that's fine. Yeah, so let's go there, spend quickly five minutes going through this recap of what we saw since we started with the, with the webinars. First of all, what is BIM? Building Information Modeling are the words behind this acronym. And this is the combination of the visualization and the information. We are delivering representation of uh, virtual representation of 3D models for projects or objects with information inside. Okay, this is the main difference. This is not 3D design. It's not delivering um, documentation with uh, with some properties of the products. It's all together. Okay, the visualization and the information all together. And the things which are not BIM, this is not a specific software. Uh, we said before, no 3D design. We also cover some aspect about how it can benefit other different departments of the of the business like sales or marketing so it's not only for the ASC sector technical sector mm -hmm. and the the last and very most, most powerful word is not a linked data remember this is a project who manage a project methodology which manages the whole life cycle of the project and we are pulling data and managing through the whole life cycle of it so it's important that, to have this unlinked link data inside the project Right. So just I have a question saying just to once on the on the meeting saying, you know, we have right now implemented the beam because we have the, the Revit solution installed. So mm -hmm. everything is clear. So that's not really what what you just mentioned here. Right. So just uh, overall, the, the implementing software solution will not uh, put you into the, the reflection on how the, the building information modeling works in the company. Right. That's so that's not that's not only the one. Yeah. Thing. This is what we're going to cover today, actually. Um, it's depending about the, the dimension and the level of detail of the BIM. So if you want to go only for design, you have a certain dimension of uh, services that BIM can provide you. If you want to go further, of course, you will need several different software uh, or implementing new tools for them to keep going with the, with the whole life cycle of the project. So 
Got Good it. question because just give me the the, the enter for the today's topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Good. So on the second session, we cover things about the, the off, what being offers in general scope about the project. We deliver the three different types of services, architectural engineering and the MAP, which are the mechanical electrical plumbing, some different installations on the on the project. Um, the most likely solution to be used are the class detection to generate documentation as a bit of material, material takeoffs. And the where we are talking now, the CD to remember this common data environment and the life cycle assessment. So all these services and solutions implemented with the new methodology can lead to a reduced cost, to save time and increment the productivity in the general scope of the project. Um, lately, lately we, we cover who is BIM, deliver the their fame main actor, the five main actors sorry, of the of the construction project, such as architecture, facility managers, investors, manufacturers, and engineers, and what are their main benefits to use BIM or reasons to use the BIM. Here, I will highlight the communication, coordination, and collaboration, which is mandatory and necessary between of them if they want to work under the BIM methodology. So those three C's are also part of the key definition of BIM, along with this visualization and information, because it's a methodology that requires communication, coordination, and collaboration between different parties to have a successful implementation. So I think one of the questions which was also just asked uh, on the, the last uh, last week, what is the successful implementation? What are the criteria to have the successful implementation? In UK? I think this is what we need to put in one of our maybe discussion with one of the guests, which we'll have at the end mm -hmm. of June. You know, what is the successful implementation and what is not really and how to approach it to make it quick and must must take it uh, get it a must out of it yeah and um, basically as a quick draft i would say you need a good communication high level of coordination and collaboration between all the parties involved because without those three c's we cannot do a successful bid implementation this is it's not something that you will you will drive by yourself you need more people within your firm outside your firm different partners to deliver a successful bid project yeah, uh, you're talking like a consultant, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear myself sometimes say, wow, I'm so boring. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Good. And lately, what we saw last week, <clears throat> those uh, benefits we discussed uh, beyond the technical aspect, how can help to the marketing, sales, uh, HR departments, in, like everyone should be understanding and participant of the BIM technology. Display here some results of, um, of surveys that says, things about the how can we get some advantage in different uh, different um, departments for example increasing the productivity giving a positive return on investment decreasing time saving time uh, costs and money and so on and very important also uh, those three seven main uh, aspects for uh, for contractors or, or suppliers where we can consider being in terms of uh, drafting a marketing plan reviewing our resources or looking about the sales or customer relationship department this is important also how it will affect in our company if we deploy and we implement uh, being services clear <laughs> perfect so Let's go and crack on the today's topics. As I say, beam levels and dimensions. This is more aspect of the technical um, definition of beam, but it's important that people know about this as well, because uh, when we want to implement beam into a project, someone who knows about beam, about beam and wants to work with us, say, okay, what level of, of beam do you want? What dimension of it do you want? And you need so, to say, okay. so, Enrique, just, so just to make yep. sure that I so, so we you said okay. We know what is the beam. We know what are the, the really the criteria and how to use it, etc. And that's not only the the pure technical aspect. So with the dimension level and dimensions, it just shows what the maturity of the of the yeah. implementation. Yeah, that's, that's a good that's a good word of uh, to define this. The maturity of implementation. How big we want to go? How, up to which point do we need to to extract information from beam? So we want to see. Of course, this can have to focus. We can define the goal of the dimension of the level of detail up to the point where the project will finish, or this will evolve as well as the project evolves as well. So we are starting with a level, certain dimension and level of detail, and will be increasing as per our project evolves. So there's two different approaches to this, but we need to know the, the stages. So at the beginning, you cannot start, for example, trying to foresee estimations or costs if you don't have, you have not your design in place. So this is go stage by stage, we'll see right. 
Okay. We start with the with the level of the sign, also called LOD. Sometimes I saw a uh, level of detail of uh, also level of development. Okay, I would prefer to call it level of design, simple LOD, DM. So basically, amount of details included on the project or object. This uh, small image I like it just give you a rough idea about uh, what are the different stages of this LOD, uh, usually from 100 to 500. There's a couple of them more. Uh, I saw somewhere around, but this is the main people scope that you can see how the project or the concept of the design of the project evolves from a previous, uh, sorry, a pre-designed draft up to the total as build of the project. Okay. <clears throat> Taking a look of all of them, we see the LOD 100, which is a pre-designed stage. So we just sit and create a conceptual model that we have in our mind, put it on the paper or on the computer. I only have, let's say, illustrative of understanding purposes. So everyone are talking the same language and we are all defining the same objective on this project. Then when this is settled, we evolve to the LOD 200, which is a schematic stage. We are adding more information, we are adding more dimension, but still it's not fully defined, it's not fixed, this is still evolving. We are still on the, on the design phase. The next one, the design stage, is where we already settle and agree for the graphical representation of the of the project or model. We already know what concept we want to deliver and it's ready to be processed. This is not that doesn't mean it won't allow changes. It means that it's gonna be it's gonna be there, defined, but of course ready to be implemented on the on the construction stage, which is the following one. LOD 400 is when we go for the construction construction. Sorry, is when we add some also information for the products and the installation are already implemented. <laughs> <laughs> the cat is coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh no problem, no problem. Just one, one, one thing. It's just, can we have just something like uh, uh, between the two, between the, mm -hmm. the, the the layers, the level of design? Because this is five hundred. You know, I, I I just from the IT, I know when I put 300, 300, 400, I always think that can be the three hundred twenty or three hundred thirty and three hundred something. Exactly. So, did we have a different gray, gray zones between these two? Yeah, let me go one couple of slides more and you will see that those ones, okay? <laughs> so the last one, as I said, is the LOD 500 when all the all the construction has been finished and we have the as build stage, all the verification operation and latest, latest change on the on site have been already implemented and the, and the, the, full, the full design is ready for the MNO uh, operation of the life cycle of the, of the project, okay? And as you... Sorry? We have the one questions from the, oh, yeah. the here, where I can find more details of level of design. Mm -hmm. More details level of design. We we can find this, of course, Google in, Google online. We can take a look on the on the different uh, blogs or uh, or YouTube channel. But we are gonna now release some of the some videos going deeper into this topic. So, for example, if we have some uh, some of the people asking for the level of design, we can make a specific um videos or clips talking deeper about this so thank you so much for, for bringing this up and we can go deeper on the on, on the requirements about this project about okay. the project sorry, about this uh, level of design let me just put some notes on it that's good yeah. thank you. <laughs> completely and now just to summarize this uh, level of design i want to give you a quick draft and what you said before bill i wanted to structure only this from 100 to 500 to make it nice and tidy but of course there is some between level let's say uh this one you asked before the crucial stage between the when the design is done and when the construction is taking in place. There is one in the middle that we call LOD 350, let's call it construction documentation stage, when the design is already agreed and where we add information for the coordination of services and implementation of, uh, of all the installation. So the, let's say that this one is when we agree with the design, we are taking all the information, let's say in installation instruction or handling for the materials and we deliver all together. This is an intermediate stage between, and of course you can have more of them defining your own your own uh, level of of uh, design along the project. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. And lately, this 600, 700, or the other ones that we can see when the construction is finished, and uh, if we start to do this managing of the life cycle of the project, so we can monitor all the behavior, implement more data, do the operations, uh, environmental stop of services, and so. On. Interesting. Okay, so so that's okay. Good questions mm -hmm. from from this where to find the more details, and I think we this is the good like this is the good idea just for us just to 
go into some more of this in one of the shorter videos mm -hmm. we can prepare it very this is the witness research uh, i would like to say um this person who was uh, jan that um is a bit uh, is not is not a common understanding of this in terms of uh, this this number of uh, of a level of detail or so on that's why i add all, all of the one i saw sometimes you see a scale you see up to 100 to 400 other times you see the 350 the 250 other times you go up to 700 and that's why i try to put it all together in a nice part, one to 100 to 500, but adding these two intermediates or extra stages at the at the end. So depending on the source you, you see, you will see maybe more details focus on one part or not. This is why also it's important to sit down with the, with the pin coordinator at the beginning of the project and define the level of design that we want to follow on our project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, you know, the, the BIM coordinator is just, it's for sure, it's a job which you will have it in the big companies. But if you have the company of 30 people or 40 people, I think you will not have the BIM coordinator. So <laughs> so we need to think about it as, as well. That, that's yeah. also come to my mind, you know, how we will talk to the different, comp different company size, right? We have experience with the big one, but maybe there is something which is, uh, we need to think, you know, how to really do this for the, the smaller companies. That, that's why um, it's, uh, it has been has an impact also on the HR department, for example, if we decide to implement BIM in our company, we need to look at our resources, our personnel, see if, uh, if there is people inside the company which are able to take those roles, if they need the formation or we need to bring them over. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. But if you have the 50 people company, I don't think so that you have the HR department. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so in, in our Tilco advisors, we know that how we don't have the HR department, for example, right? So just that uh, we're dealing all of ourselves with all of the stuff which we're coming with the people coming and going, etc. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just the size of it, right? And so we're using some of the tools which we just, we implemented, right? Anyway, that's a, that's a good point. I think the size of the company matter here mm -hmm. in the way how you can just, uh, how you can do it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All good. So I hope it's clear with the level of design. And we're gonna jump on the second one, which is the, the dimensions of the of the of B. Okay. On this one, so we are we are not um, talking about the model itself, just about the services we can get from BIM. So it's a more general scope of the whole project, not just the what is actually the visualization and information design. This is seeing the whole project as a as a full machine running, let's say. So the, the dimensions are represented by a D. We can go some stages, same as LOD. I saw during my research and studies and experience, I saw 1D, 2D, but this is basically pre-concept design. No one uh, will achieve or aim for those ones because it's, a, it's things that you can do with a paper and, <laughs> and hand and paper. So let's go from, from 3D, I will say, up to 7D. So design, scheduling, estimating, sustainability, and maintenance, the level of evolution where BIM can grow within a project. This doesn't mean that our goal needs to be on 7D. We can set our goal with BIM with 3D. Then for the next project, we, we have successful uh, inputs. We can go for the 4D and produce some, some materials, uh, some, sorry, some, some scheduling, some costs, go for 5D and so on. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Sounds so, complicated here. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, I think it did. <laughs> I think for, in in our in our company we are on the on the two D for some. <laughs> so I think that's good. Okay. Oh, of course, yeah. Companies who have not been implementation yet, they, they don't even they have not no did all dimensions on the on the beam maturity on inside the project. No, so it's important when you put the, the implementation of beam to reach at least the three D the the design stage because you want to produce objects or services in BIM. So this is at least the minimum requirement. Of course, BIM, where the most help is going to be is on the design phase. We are focusing and shifting all the force on the design phase so we don't make uh, more mistakes and we save time and money on those mistakes when we go to site and produce and do some orders and make the work itself. So the design stage is the key one where we start from BIM. Okay, very good. Good. So let's take a look quickly about uh, the details of all of them. <clears throat> As I said, 3D design, uh, sorry, three uh, dimension 3D is the design of the shape of the of the project. So we're going to focus on the geometry, the aspects of what is being represented. If this is our object or our project. Here, the requirements or the benefits I will get from BIM on this stage are going to be mostly for the design. So here, the LOD and the three dimensions are going to work together because it's, they are connected. They will say it's pretty much the same thing. But now, if we evolve for the 4D, we're talking about the scheduling. It's called 
So we're going to implement information. We're going to, with all that information and data we put inside, we're going to evaluate the answer, some aspects of the project. We're going to run some simulations and we're going to see if our design is doable. We're going to see if there is some potential classes, if there is some potential problems or, or some uh, some number doesn't work out, no? stuff like that. And the next stage, 5D, is estimation. When we have all those um, information and tests, let's say, run on place and we agree with the design and their consequences, we can deliver uh, some cost estimation, bill of material, on other types of documentation, documentation extracted from BIM. So let, let's say we have a certain level of maturity. I know, for example, in the UK, they call it level of maturity from uh, from two to, uh, sorry, from one to zero, one to one, three. Um, Let's say that these three dimensions, 3D, 4D, and 5D, they, they are the, the minimum um, the minimum requirements to deliver a maturity level two, which is which are the projects today we run on on the, on the street in, in BIM. At least we need to provide the design, we need to make sure that it works, and we need to deliver cost, documentation, times, and so on. So in these three, they are different stages, but they, they should be the let's say the ultimate goal for today's technology, where all the companies who run with me, they all today have all these three dimensions in place. Okay, clear. Oh, that's no questions from me, from my <laughs> Good. That's easy. Yeah, you did a good job, so. <laughs> <laughs> so next, for the last two ones, uh, these are a bit above the, what, I, what I said before. So when the construction is finished, when we already implement our project or product in place, we have still going uh, some information or thing that we can get from BIM. Remember, managing the life cycle of the project. We are not stopping when the product is finished. Okay, fine, I did my work, bye. No, we keep monitoring this and we kept having valuable insight or advantage from BIM. For example, 6D, sustainability. Here, when the project is already running, we can still monitor the energy, energy analysis, environmental, so environmental data to see if the construction is really behaving as we expect it or if there is some oper uh, operation and maintenance we need to take in place, see how they need to be gone, because sometimes the cal uh, all the calculations, they are not expected, or you don't, the, the building doesn't behave as you expected or estimate on the previous stages. And the next one, which is the latest today, is the 7D, Facility Managing Application. This one is already related. We, we manage the whole life cycle of the project and we define the strategies, one the analysis of the of, of environmental data, energy, energy sustainability, and so on is being carried out in place with the with the building or the project already running. We define the strategy and the plans for the operation and maintenance of this project until its demolition, stop of services, renewal, and so on. So it's sort of uh, see how it works and define a uh, plan to maintain this level or improve it during the lifetime of the cycle of the project. It's pretty obvious, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, in theory, it's pretty obvious. So for, uh, <laughs> for people who have not been, of course, this is too early. This is too early, sorry, too far. We are not, we, need, we cannot achieve this at the beginning. We need still uh, years of uh, projects of practice to reach certain levels of maturity, 3D, 4D, 5D, as I say, this is going to be the, our goal on medium term, a long term, having this data to manage its sustainability, facility management, and so on. You know, but one, one of the things, <laughs> excuse me, one of the yeah. things, which, when, when you go back for just for a second, yeah, uh, uh, I just don't get it why the sustainability is a 6D and the facility is 7D, because you know, you will have the, on the facility management application, you will have also the sustainability. So I'm, I'm not sure mm -hmm. that I understood that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's related. It's true that it's related, but um, we need to see it from the, when the construction is done, we have the as-built project in place. If we're talking about a building, for example. First, we do the same analyze, analyzing how it, how it is behaving. And for that, we take all the data, we analyze, with testing on, on site, if the efficiency of the energy efficiency is the same as expected, if the emissions or how the building behaves or works is the same as expected, and all this analyze, let's say, like adding, adding of data or um, making those uh, testing on place, they are the 6D, monitoring, gathering all the data. And when we have all this information, we design the plan or the strategies to carry out operational maintenance of life cycle management of the project. So it's defined in two stages, let's say prepare, so 6D will be an, a preparation for the 7D. 
no? we are need to get this data and observe the, the actual and present installation to see if we what kind of plus we need to deliver to its proper functionment on the future we have four minutes to go my dear so just okay. sorry for <laughs> i will stop asking the questions sorry, sorry. <laughs> this, is, this is done this is done about this is a display here a quick summary of what we just talked level of dimensions uh, level of detail of detail sorry and uh, the bit dimensions 100 to 500 three four five six seven this remember this go to this doesn't go together it's not the same thing but they are related and the most important thing don't get overwhelmed and try to go for LOD 570 in our first project. We need to go slowly. First achieve the 3D, first deliver construction uh, construction documentation on BIM services on LOD 300, 350, aiming to 400, 500, and slowly we implement it and make it bigger. Okay, and this is Enrique who say that we're supposed to go slowly. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I just, uh, okay, hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So that's all for, for today. Um, some next episode topics we have in mind: BIM implementation plan, talking about the BIM libraries. So any other topics? I talk to the audience directly. If you have any questions, concerns, uh, doubts about this, let us know. Contact us. We are planning also to have some people collaborating with us on the on the weekly talk. So if you are interested, you know someone, or you just want to make questions in life, let us know. Contact us, and we can make uh, we can make this collaboration happen. <laughs> All right. And, and again, the same thing. I'm just, if you have any, any people who just, you think it will be worth to invite and just to, to start mm -hmm. to talk and chatting about it, just let us know. Mm -hmm. I think we will just get the people on board and try just to convince them to, to get it. Uh, if you would like just to book the meeting with us, that's the way and the best way just to do this because that's the online calendar, which you can see it just, uh, no particular, uh, obligation on your side. It just, you will be able to see it. Uh, our agenda and just to connect with us again three of charge we just i think we try just to do the evangelist we try to do the evangelists be evangelist of the <laughs> in europe uh we're going right now through france spain switzerland germany uh, benelux and just i think we will just go into the uk very soon so i think mm -hmm. that will be the good way to do this and, uh, the language we are just going for polish spanish <laughs> Uh, French and English, um, German in next uh, five to ten years for me. So it's just potentially hopefully, uh, hopefully, hopefully, oh. yeah, Swedish, 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 Norwegian. <laughs> okay, okay, that's it. I think from on our side. Oh, we just we don't want to just talk about the beam readiness as well. Yeah, the all for our focus journey. The next week, Friday, the third of June. We're already close to the summer time, so. 3rd of June at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. My God, that will be already the, no, it's not summer. Good. Enrique, thank you very much for, for having the chat today. Uh, just uh, thank you very much for the questions, thumbs ups. I see that we are on the different platforms thanks to this magic tool, which we are using. So we are on Twitter, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on the different channels. Wow. And uh, I'm just sometimes overwhelmed with the different comments, etc. I don't know how to manage them still. So just yeah. uh, on the session 22, 25, I think I will know. Where to <laughs> one day we're going to make one session before we finish this season, gathering all the comments and do like a okay, Q &A, Q a session. So <laughs> that's a good one. Oh my God, you're just a good, good, good Friday. Thank you very much, Enrique. Have a great Happy day. Friday, everyone. Okay. Happy Friday, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.